So today's session is about making space. We have looked at clearing the decks, we've looked at mine dumps, and we've looked at dealing with stuff. But today we're going to start the decluttering process. So why am I saying starting to declutter, not just declutter, and just get on with it and do it? Well, I think decluttering is a process in itself, and it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. There's a lot attached to decluttering. We have connections to items, we have emotions, we have past feelings, and we have beliefs about attachment. Now, I haven't got time to go into all those today, but I will go into these in another training where I'll talk about the beliefs that we attach. But if you just think to yourself now, and maybe put into the chat, what beliefs you attach to attachment, um, and why perhaps we hold on to stuff. So for example, waste not, want not is a belief. You can't get rid of gifts if people give you a gift because they bought it for you and they've given you a gift and you just can't get rid of it. If you um, come from a, ha a family where maybe in a household where learning has been valued, books are full of learning and it's very hard to get rid of books. However, books are brilliant and buying books and, and having that knowledge is fantastic, but it's using that knowledge as we've said before. And I've got many books that I've got on my shelves here, which I go back to over and over again and learn from them. But there is a belief about books. Also, it's about money and what the cost and how much it costs when you bought it. So when you bought that Apple phone, when you bought your Apple number four or whatever it was when you bought it, that cost a lot of money. And you still think that still costs that amount of money now. There's a theory called stump cost, uh, some costs, which I, I'll talk about again elsewhere. But really things don't cost the same as they did when you bought them, but we have a belief they do. And also the big one of the big beliefs about decluttering is I may use that one day. So be interested to see what you put in the chat and what your beliefs about not uh, cluttering or, or not getting rid of stuff. Be really interesting to see what your beliefs are about them. But as I said, we're not going to go into much um, depth here. I'm going to focus on the strategies that I've used and I've learned about to declutter. So the first thing I want you to think about before we launch into the strategies is beginning with the end in mind. Why have you decided that decluttering is for you? Why have you decided to clear and make the space? What will it look like when you've done this, when you've decluttered an area or a space in your house or in your office? Will it give you more space? Will it give you more time and energy? What will the benefits be? There'll be less to clean, less to organise, maybe less stress involved, because we do get stressed when we have mess and we have clutter around. And I know people say they have a messy desk, but they know where to find things. However, um, it can cause stress. And I used to know um, from personal, um, my personal uh, life, I used to have a front room where I used to put things in uh, and where, they, where I hadn't decided where they to get, where to go. But my front room was where my front door was. And I used to come into that room sometimes and see that declutter and see that mess. And then that actually provoked a stress uh, sort of um, feeling in me. So I, I really needed to, to declutter that room. And I changed that room entirely. Of when I walked into the house, it was a room of peace. It was quiet. It was painted while it was bright. And that had a lot of, a lot of um, stress. Also, I've talked about when you approach your desk and when you come to it and it's messy and, st and you, you can't focus on what you're doing. And we talked about clearing the decks in session one. And certainly what I do every Friday night, I polish my desk. Um, and clear it for the weekend. In fact, I did it this morning getting ready for what we're doing now. Also think about you'll have more energy and more space to enjoy. So think about those reasons why you want to declutter. So on to the day, I'm going to mention five strategies to help you on this journey. And I always talk about five strategies within these presentations. So the first strategy, number one, is to start with five minutes at a time. As I said to you, this is not about a sprint. It's you, It's not about a, um, a sprint, as in doing this all in one day. That is, I think that is too much when you try to declutter. What you can have is little sprints to clear an area or you know start off the process. 
and that's fantastic and we use our 17 minute sprints to do that obviously we've got our 25 minute sprints the 17 minute sprints are fantastic though just to do one place so start with a short period of time you know if you only removed one item a day that would be 365 items from your home that you would have decluttered or if you remove two that's 720 items now i'm not sure some of us have 720 items but it is a start so tip number one is it's not a marathon use sprints tip number two is have buckets ready and we've talked about buckets before so i'm going to make this easy for you you can only have three buckets your first bucket is a get rid of bucket your second bucket is an incubate bucket and your third is no this needs a home bucket all right now what do i mean by buckets i don't literally mean a bucket i mean a place i use those big plastic boxes that you can use but for the getting rid of bucket i have a trash bag or a rubbish bag okay so get rid incubate and keep so get rid means it's either going to be thrown away, it's going to be recycled, or you're going to give it away. Your incubate bucket basically means that's a place to put stuff that you're not quite sure of at this time. And your third bucket is keep it and it needs a home. And you empty your get rid and you empty your keep bucket at the end of each session. Either get rid, trash recycle, give away or keep it needs a home and you put it in its home okay so that was a big one for number one not a marathon uh, sorry not a sprint not in a sh you know not over in uh, a whole day or a week because that's a lot and then you need to have these buckets to put places so number two is follow number two is follow a process so if it's broken and it can can't be fixed then you have to ask yourself the question are you going to spend time, money and energy doing on this? And if you're going to spend that time, money and energy, it's time to say goodbye. I personally am not, I'm not a big fixer, although I fix things. But sometimes when I fix things, it's just taken up too much time. And it probably would have been easier just to get rid of it, give it away or give it to someone who could fix it. Also, you know, um, it, the cost of fixing something might just be easy to to give it away and look for a cheaper alternative and certainly the energy you know if you're going to spend a whole day fixing that shredder that's broken and you you know you're going to take it apart i am talking from um my own experience here and then you put it together and it still doesn't work i've wasted six hours when i could have really probably just either ripped things up or went off and bought a new shredder so you're going to ask yourself is it broken Next question to ask yourself, are you going to use it or wear it in the next year? If the answer is no, I suggest it goes in the incubate bucket. Some people have this th thing in your wardrobe where you turn your hangers around and various things. That's just too complicated for me. So I have a place, I have a big uh, plastic box which I put clothes in that I'm not going to use, okay? Or going to use it in this year. Also, I ask myself, am I going to use it in this season? So in the UK, it's the winter time now. We all need our big winter coats and we've all got a big winter coat. Well, that at the minute is not in my wardrobe. That is in my storage box in the garage, which has got my winter clothes in. And what I do at the end of each season is put those clothes in. So I swap my winter clothes for my summer clothes. I also have a um, bag of clothes that I only use on holiday. Um, you know, it's got flip-flops in, it's got three t-shirts that I use, etc. And that is in there as well. What I suggest also in the process is if you are keeping the item, you need to put it away uh, and put it away there and then. And also at the end of the process, you need to, as I said, empty your get rid box and empty your um, it needs a place box. So is it broken? Are you going to use it? Um, if not, and you decide and put it in the trash, get rid of it or recycle it and then put it away there and then. I know this sounds easy, but as I've said, decluttering the process can be quite emotional. So tip number three is about that. If it gets too emotional, I suggest you stop, okay? And give yourself a break. It's okay to be indecisive. It's okay to stop, all right? 
Number four, why not try doing small projects? Don't go for the big one. I'm going to declutter the house. And we've all seen it on TV, haven't we? Those decluttering programs and you, you can do this in a day and you, you can... Um, you can if you want, but it does take a lot of time and energy. Start small. So what about doing your car first? Why not just do the glove compartment in your car? Okay. And by the way, do you really have gloves in your glove compartment? If you do and you're watching this on replay and you have gloves in your glove compartment, please tell me in the comments. Start with a drawer. You know that man drawer that we all have or, or the woman drawer that we all have? Start with that or your dresser by your bed. Um, a good tip I use is the little those little sealable bags that you can buy. You know that they have like a ziplock thing on, and you can put things in those that are like minded. So in the man drawer downstairs, and um, what we basically start to do, we put um, you know, I take hay fever tablets for example, and they're in that man drawer. So I put them into a little ziplock bag. I had some pens. I put them in a little ziplock bag, and just put them in the drawer rather than everything in being loose and the. The rule is with the man drawer is basically um, if it isn't in the bag, it doesn't belong in the drawer, it needs to go. Another small project you might want to think about is your glasses and mug cupboard at home. You have your mugs and you have your, your favourite cup that you were given 14 years ago, but it's all chipped and everything. It's time. It's time to go through your mug and glass drawer. And we also, for some reason, we gather mugs and glasses from places. Uh, some people say we borrow them from places, uh, but it's time perhaps as a project to declutter your glass and mug cupboard. Another tip, do one shelf at a time. And it's amazing if, uh, what you get from the one shelf at a time, because this changes the culture of a whole room. So I'd suggest you think about that. And what about lastly, your medicine cabinet? Why don't you use that as a project? Go in your medicine cabinet today, get rid of the out of date medicine, okay? Get rid of the out of date, out of the date of medicine. Um, things that maybe are a bit icky, get rid of those and make sure you get rid of them responsibly. And the last tip is number five. And number five is saying no to more. Think about before you buy, accept something that you don't need it. Please just say no with grace. I mentioned that in another video. You know, take, take, um, you know, take the tip is do you need it? Do you need it? If you don't, then then don't have it. Um, a friend of mine actually um, was someone who shopped a lot and she shopped a lot on um, the shopping channels. And she decided to stop her get adding more stuff to her house. She did two things. The first thing she did she took off all her passwords and account names, so she had to retype them again if she needed to buy something. But she also, and I kid you not, froze her credit card. And now I don't mean froze it from the bank. I mean, literally froze it. She put it in a Ziploc bag, immersed it in water, put it in the freezer, and basically, what that was about is if she wanted to buy something on it, she had to defrost the big block of ice. It might be extreme, but it did work. Personally, I uh, found when I decluttered my house, I was going back into the uh, into the sort of the, the trash box or the, the recycle box and oh no, having second thoughts. So I, what I did, I actually put those things in my car, in the boot of the car, closed the car, and then that stopped me re-looking at them. Another tip you might want is a uh, declutter buddy, to have someone on your shoulder to say, no, it's time to say goodbye. So there was a lot there, folks. I'll just recap the five steps. Five minutes at a time, go small. Have buckets. Follow a process and commit to those. Take a breath if you need it and start with those small projects first. Thank you.